and Kita. Elisha has a sleeping enemy character. Um, I'm, I'm Hi, on my way to... She's on the way to get, to get her vaccine, Mr. Daniel. Oh, wow. Okay. First dose or second dose? My line, tak berapa, okay. Tak berapa, okay, yes. Okay, never mind. It's okay, don't worry. As long as you're there. Yes. Yeah. Second Sorry. dose or? First dose. First dose, okay. All the best to you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Sangeeta. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Say, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's, 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 let's get into it. Um, I hope everyone's okay this morning. We were changing our stance on like, initially we told about like 7 to 10%. We're changing now, we are saying we're going to find him 50,000 instead. So we'll stick to it. Okay, uh, uh, why don't you, do you, are you ready with your sort of presentation flow? Then you can present it, you can do one run. Uh, present it. Uh. So I noticed some of the other teams, they have slide, presentation slides. Will you all be doing that? Ah, okay, there you go. Wow, got Pudi's logo on. So officious. Okay, I'll start this. Yeah. Yep. I hope my eye is doing good. All right. <laughs> good evening. My name is Yenling, and together with me, I have Sagita, Sei, and Shashwini. I will be presenting alongside Sagita while Sei and Shashwini will be taking up the QA session. Moving on, we would like to address a few things beforehand. Firstly, the problem statement. The issue is centered on the divide in a case where a burger hawker is fined 50,000 ringgit due to violating the emergency act and operating his hawker store beyond 10 p.m. The people mostly felt it is unjust and the law should be enforced morally. Next, Kevin. Our presentation will be based on a few things. Firstly, we made our decisions based on the real life incident where the burger hawker had been fined 1,000 ringgit before the emergency ordinance 2021. He also had violated the standard operating procedure by setting up tables for customers and for failing to provide a body temperature scanner. We also will be basing on the time setting when the controversy arise, about 26 April 2021. This means Dato Sri Tachiyudin has done press conference stating only a maximum penalty amount of 10,000 ringgit for exceeding business hours has not been taken place yet. As Inspector General of Police, we face a situation where we had two police officers arguing with each other pertaining to the issuance of a fine made by one of them. Let's call him Police Officer A. Meanwhile, Police Officer B disagree with it, as she thinks as a police officer, we should uphold the law morally. First and foremost, we would like to acknowledge that conflicts in the police, police station among police officers is very common. We actually to an extent welcome conflicts because we think it represents the care each of our police officers have for their line of work. We appreciate both of the police officer and other for debating on the matter. Coming back to the issue between police officer A and police officer B, we believe both of them have their fair points. Police officer B believes that 50,000 ringgit is a high price to pay for a burger hawker who is trying to earn a living for his family during this hard time. Not only it is a high price, but it may lead to a detrimental effect to him and his family, which could lead to other issues in the future like deterioration in mental health and tendency to be involved in illegal trades to pay off the fine. Police Officer A, on the other hand, issued the burger hawker a hefty fine under a few bases, particularly for the people. He believed that his act could lead to a further spreading of COVID-19. Since the SOP are formulated to combat COVID-19, 
he believed that the burger hawker is taking the virus lightly and brushing aside the seriousness of the effects of the pandemic, since this is not his first time to violate the Emergency Act. Also, 50,000 ringgit is not close to the value of the potential life loss and health hazard for him, his family, and the people that visit his store if they will contract the virus due to his act. While others Malaysians are abiding to the SOP during this hard time, he believes the burger hawker is no exception to the law and it is his duty, duly responsibility to get people to abide SOP so as a nation we can get rid of COVID-19 and get back to the norm. Or at least to not let the daily cases of COVID-19 to spread higher than about 6,000 like back in 29 January 2021 as he cannot imagine what it would be like to have the daily cases to pick up again to an unimaginable 10,000 cases a day. Who do you lean more towards is a hard question for us because both of them have their points. This is why we always ensure working together in justifying any issue, not only based on the issue at stake, but also in terms of how we provide a better environment for the people and enforce law morally in the future. Looking ahead builds the foundation for us to carry out our responsibilities better. When it comes to the when it comes to law that allows description, like the emergency ordinance 2021, we have made guidelines on fines for those who violate the SOPs to avoid inconsistency in fines. This will allow for a uniformity in our line of works and fairness can be upheld. Now, I will pass to IGP Sangita to carry out the press statement to further deliberate on the matter and also we end. Yeah. Thank you, IGP Yen Ling. Good evening to the members of the hall, the fellow people from the media, and not to forget the Malaysians that are at home. And my fellow IGBs here with me, IGP Yen Ling, IGP Sui, and IGP Sashwini. The Royal Malaysia Police would like to clarify matters regarding the, the 50,000 ringgit fine issued to a burger hawker for operating his burger stall after 10 p.m. in accordance with the Emergency Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act Ordinance 2021. Under the Emergency Ordinance 2021, it is stated that a compound of 10,000 ringgit can be given to any individual who commits an offence under this Act, and if prosecuted, the individual may be liable for a fine not exceeding 100,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years or both. Let us now see a quick rundown of the issue. On 25th of April 2021, during the police rundowns after 10 p.m., a burger hawker was found still operating his burger stall at 11 p.m. He has been warned previously for it and also had been fined 1,000 ringgit for not complying the standard operating procedures SOPs. As it was not his first time, the police officers fined him 50,000 ringgit. As we all know, the burger hawker exercised his freedom of speech to express his frustration, and before we know it, his post on Facebook went viral. And the po people were vocal about the issue. Almost all, if not Malaysians, were unhappy with the decision of our police officer. Almost, as we know, at the end of the day, police officers are also part of the community, and uh, and we also Malaysians. Back at the police officers, we did have a conflict between police officers pertaining to the issue. One of our police part officers in particular, was at the same stance as the people. She was unhappy with the issuance of the fine. She felt that the fine was too hefty to pay during these hard times. On the other hand, the police officer who issued the fine believes that his act could lead to a further spreading of COVID-19. And since the SOPs are formulated to combat COVID-19, he believes that the burger hawker is taking the virus lightly and brushing aside the seriousness of the effect of the pandemic. Hence, we discussed the matter deliberately for hours. And after further deliberation, the RMP has decided to stick to issuing the burger the burger hawker a fine of 50,000 ringgit. This is because the burger hawker was given several warnings beforehand and it was not his first time operating the burger stall past 10 p.m. Operating at 11 p.m. is beyond unacceptable. At RMP, we assure everyone that indeed we are working for the people, for the Malaysians at the, at the end of the day. So his actions leave mainly for detrimental effect to the community, particularly to his, himself and his family. Their lives value more than 50,000 ringgit to us. Also, I think it's a great opportunity for us to highlight how serious we are talking, taking the pandemic, and also hope it will be a good awareness to fellow Malaysians. 
We also like to take these opportunities to emphasize that as police officers, our responsibility has always been serving Malaysians and enforcing the law. We will also be taking measures in ensuring our service for the people is always fair and consistent regardless of our social background, be it family members or politicians, celebrities or men on the street. No one is an exception to the law. In order to ensure our service, particularly pertaining to the fines for the emergency ordinance, since the law allows discretion, we will be following a guideline that will be finalized by the legislative body and be briefed to all our police officers. As an enforcers, we do not have the right to make the laws of this country. Moving forward, for the hawker, we advise you to appeal to the health ministry for the reduction of the amount of the issue fine if you think you need it. As for police officers under the flag of Royal Malaysia Police, we will be strictly adhering to the laws and guidelines and providing the best service we can for the nation. As for Malaysians, stay home and stay safe and only travel when it's necessary. And please comply to the SOPs. That's all from me. Thank you. Is that the end? <laughs> Is it? Oh my god. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it faster. I'm so sorry. Oh you're not done yet? Oh the, the residues are done? Wait, how long has it been? I didn't even check time. So um... I saw that in the chat box. Azwan said that it's 11 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So Azwan said it's 11 minutes, but I got 8.52 on mine. Maybe I started like two minutes late. Um, okay, uh, so is that is that the end of your presentation? Sorry, yeah. that was, it, it wasn't clear. Okay, right. So I think I think what you can do is when you end, you can say, thank you so much. Um, I now open the floor to questions from members of the press. That then signals to the media that you're ready to take um, questions related to this issue. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to just go through a few comments very fast now. Um, so what I noticed is your press statement actually begins at about five minutes. So you start off with somewhat like of a very long introduction where you talk about you know problem statement. You have two slides, your caveats. Um, I don't know format wise whether that is encouraged in this competition, but or, or whether or not you should go straight into the press conference. Um, I don't know. Does 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 anybody know? Because I think this is a more of a technical point whether or not you need to say, okay, here's a problem statement, here's this, and now we start our press conference, or whether you go straight into uh, the press statement. Um, it's really up to them. It's more just like whatever uh, they're doing, we give them 10 minutes, that's it. Like it's up to them if they want to allocate uh, five minutes for press, five minutes for intro. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Arisha. Okay, that, that, that's helpful team. So what I would suggest then is, um, you, you all would need to shorten your opening bit because I timed it at about five minutes. If I was using Azwan's magical clock, it would have been seven. That means you would have uh, probably wasted quite a bit of time. Um, so Alicia, so your point was fine in trying to set up. So it's good that you had the problem statement, you had a bit of recap of the facts. Um, I think your first caveat is not to, your, your first caveat, the part where you said that this is based on a true story, you don't need to say that. Um, don't say it's based on a true story it's better for you to say that this incident has happened before. So in other words, you're trying to say that something similar has happened. So you're, instead of using it as a caveat, you're using it as a substantive point. You're using it as a, the word we use is precedence, right? So, so okay. that's the precedent. Right. Okay, that's the first point. The second point is your second slide, the one when you had the um, home minister talking about setting the guidelines, right? The one with 10,000 said, but not yet enforced, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't, you don't need that caveat. What I would recommend is use that slide in your um, proposal part in the press conference. So for instance, what I mean is, so Sangita, later, when you start talking about your solution, you'll say, you, you, you should say something like, um, the minister of home, uh, sorry, the home minister has already said that uh, there'll be certain guidelines. For example, then you give the example. If it's a certain offense of a certain nature, it's only 10,000. Right, and you know that one we believe will come into a force or will be gazetted soon enough by the government. So what you do is instead of using that as a caveat to say that oh it's not been done yet, you use this as an example of something that the government is willing to do to ensure that there's fairness. Do you get that point? Okay. Yeah. 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 So so it, it it's actually something that works to your advantage, but when you put it as a caveat, you're sort of killing your own advantage. Okay. Um, and I think also, for example, um, when uh, Alicia was mentioning about the rise in cases 
uh, that one can be emphasized a bit. That one also, I think, should be pushed to the press press release part. So again, it's it's substantive, right? So I know Sangita, you know, towards the end, you're talking about stay safe and all that. I think you also just want to remind people that you know what we've seen in Malaysia is a rise in cases. So we're taking uh, this this um, harder position against hawkers because you know if we go easy on them, um, uh, you know, COVID doesn't go easy on people, right? Uh, if, if this hawker had somehow spread it or had, had picked it up, you know, that, that could create a cluster. So as far as your, your, you know, your point on being firm is important, but then you substantiate it using the facts. Um, yeah, so I think that, that, that five minutes for your opening part where you sort of set the tone and your caveats, you should try to limit that to about three minutes at the most, I feel. Then you spend more time and move some of that into your uh, press uh, statement. Because when you said, oh, okay, now I'm going to get us, uh, my IGP to start talking. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, only now? So what was everything before this? And I think, therefore, you need to also align that with the judging criteria. Okay, so let's now talk about um, the press statement, right? Uh, also, if we take Azwan's timing, it means that you are about one minute beyond time. So therefore, when you shift everything a bit more of the substantive stuff to the press statement, I think you have more uh, impact. So overall, um, actually, I think, Sangeeta, your, your presentation as the press statement was actually quite good. Um, you talked about uh, IGP and all that. Um, so you talked about your role. Uh, however, in my, in my time, you came at, that came at almost 7 minutes, 55 seconds, which again is quite late. Um, what I think is your slides, you need to have a bit more compartmentalization. So your structure needs to be clearer. So what you probably want to do is something like, Okay, I'm the Inspector General of Police, ladies and gentlemen, the members of the press. Thank you for coming here today. You know, we appreciate uh, press objectivity and we appreciate uh, the press covering. And then you go into, okay, so here's the incident. Remember, you gave the rundown of the incident. Uh, then you can go to it again. You can say, here's what happened. Here are the facts. Pa, 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 pa. So from these facts, there are two things I would like to address. Firstly, I'd like to address, um, I think you start with the social media complaint first because that's the more important part. That's, that's what everybody in the public knows about. So you can say, you know, the hawker complained this and this and this and this. Then you can say, okay, um, let us share, you know, uh, the facts that we have obtained. Then you sort of go into it in detail. Uh, then you talk about your solution. So have a slide, you know, after the rundown, talk about your first issue, then have your solution for your first issue. Your solution, uh, and, and correct me if I'm right, you, you're going to maintain the fine, am I right, Sangeeta? Yep. Yeah, we'll okay. be Okay, so if you're maintaining, um, if you're maintaining the fine, then you've given your criteria, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you need to mention is whether the law, the emergency ordinance, gives you discretion uh, or not. And then what you can say is the solution moving forward for the hawker, if he feels aggrieved by the decision, is to um, file an appeal with the health district, which is something you mentioned yesterday, but you didn't mention today. Um, let me know if I'm talking too fast because I'm mindful we've only got 10 minutes. That's, so that's, 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 that's the solution. Then um, what you need then is you have another slide I would su suggest la, is a moving forward slide. So what you're saying is now you've got the hawker that's complained, the Royal Malaysian Police is taking a firm position where we're not going to change our fine. Also under the law, we have got no discretion, we have to implement it as it is. However, moving forward, uh, under the law, we are allowed to issue guidelines. And these guidelines are, like you said, lah, either you have a 10% rule or either you have a multiple offense rule. So first time is a warning, second time is whatever. And then, then you can say number three, nevertheless, the hawker has a right to appeal. So you sort of complete the loop in terms of your role as a police officer, the position you're taking, the solutions, as well as moving forward. Are you all clear on that? Yeah. Okay, good. So sorry, because I, I can't see you. So I, I hope that it's, it's uh, what I'm saying makes sense, right? Okay, um, then you move on to the second issue. Then you can say, okay, second issue I'd like to address is um, there have been people saying that the police force or the, our police officers were not on the same page. Allow me to uh, address this in brief. Lah. You can say that obviously my officers, you know, as part of our duty, then you just, what you said earlier about the roles of the police, right? Integrity, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is something that we'll be handling internally and, you know, we'll improve our service moving forward. Okay. Um, there's something else. Let me see. Um, okay. Yeah. So those are my general comments. I think um, what you'd want to do is just 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 talk to the when you when you present 
um, you're being officious, right? You're the IGP of police. But at the same time, don't forget to uh, prompt the media. You know, members of the media, uh, my fellow members of the public. So, so always remember you are a public figure as IGP um, and always take that opportunity to address the crowd. You know, uh, I, like, I like how you end when you have the slide about um, your police duties. And I think that's a good ending to remind everybody that, you know, we are, we are you know, here's the police duties, our values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, so, and your final reminder, uh, final words was a good reminder. Okay, um, do you have any questions for me at this point? Not really, but uh, thank you for the, the advice and suggestion. It's, I mean, uh, I need to do a lot of work, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I usually, I, 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 I probably wouldn't ask you too much, uh, or we don't need to simulate the, the Q&A, because I think uh, once you get your 10 minutes clear, based on sort of the suggestions I've given you, um, you're, 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 all of you are on, on already on the right path. Lah. So I think, um, if there was a question for the Q&A, I would probably ask, uh, um, okay, a very simple question, right? What will the police do to ensure that, uh, you know, can say, ah, recently in the news, we find that, you know, if you're a celebrity, the police will take time to investigate, you know, and then pull and celebrities get away with excuses like launching chat times in Langkawi. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, stay and touch me, but uh, we actually scripted something similar to that question. I think it's okay, uh, talking about Nilofa's case, yep. right? Uh, so we will be addressing it as we apologize for the matters that have been take uh have took place before, but uh, moving forward, we'll be following the guidelines and also most probably be uh, fining 10,000 ringgit for individual. I uh, it's their second time. And uh, for business and uh, institutions and something goes along that, we'll be finding 50,000 uh, after warning. And for social gatherings that uh, we'll be considering as individual basis. So we'll be counting the number of people that attended the social gathering. So the amount of people times 10,000 ringgit. Okay. Um, do you think the police are not compassionate enough during this MCO? But still, they, they have a chance to appeal at the district health officers. Uh, for the Nilofa case, it was decided by the court and no discounts or reduction of fine was given. But for the Hawker case, I said I can still appeal to the district health officer. And also, if he's, not, if he's still not satisfied, he can proceed the case to the magistrate. Okay, so in this case, um, the burger hawker was only just, you know, he was just finishing orders that he received. And it just so happens that when you want to cook chicken, you want to make sure it's properly cooked, right? Uh, and that exceeded the time. Don't you think the police are being a bit harsh on him? Um, from our basis, since you're taking it based on the incident that have happened before, it was at 11 p.m. where they, uh, when the police did their patrol and found him. So 11 p.m. Yep. is beyond. Uh, so don't, so sorry, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut you there. Uh, it says you're operating past 10 p.m. Are you gonna say 11 p.m. as a fact? Don't 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 use your the past case. You know, just say that based on the facts we have, he was operating past 10 p.m., which was beyond the cutoff point. I think the better, the more pointed answer would be that, um, you know, we've we've gone through this MCO for a while. Businesses know that they should be taking their final orders by 9:30, and then to start wrapping up their businesses so that they can close by 10. Right, and you're also saying yeah. that this person has been um, warned in the past. Okay. Right, yeah, and, and because you know, if, like even now, if you order grab food, um, you will know that uh, you know by nine twenty already that's the last order because you know they have to make the final order, send blah, blah, lock up. Ten o'clock is like a hard stop, yeah. So, okay. Any 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 other thing that you want me want to ask ask me? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe no. from Q and A, do you guys have anything? Uh, no. Apart from the celebrity, is there any other potential questions? Like um, which might you mm -hmm. talk about enforcement? Talk about uh, roadblocks? Talk about uh, empathy and compassion? 
Uh, no, no, I think I think you've, you've mostly got it covered. Uh, there might be curveball questions like you know things which are unrelated, like you know, um, do you? Th uh, they might ask you questions. So, do you think um, uh, uh, two people? Do you think the MC? Do you think the roadblocks are unfair for the public, for example? Uh, and I think your answer on coming up with the rules is not you. It's not the police, right? You are enforcement. I, I suppose, uh, so we've got three minutes um, and I know I've given some comments and I'm sure you all would also like to sort of go back to your slides and sort of restructure it. Uh, have your outline as well, then at least you can see um, to make sure that you're, you're touching on your points. Uh, and remember that when you, are, when you are sort of delivering your solutions, make sure that it's clear and that the judges are able to follow you so that when the judges sort of assess, they can go, okay, so I see the big picture, I see the problem, uh, you've demonstrated, you understand what's happening, then he can see your solutions based on the two issues that were highlighted in the case, which is what do you do about the, what do you, what do you, how do you handle the public's backlash, uh, as well as how would you, okay, maybe last question very quickly. Um, the public are not going to be happy with the 50,000 and the police force already has a bad reputation for being heavy handed. Um, dear IGP, what are you going to do about it? Um, I think, okay, 50,000, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys are unhappy, but I, as IGPs, I think we want to put a stand on how serious the matter is for us, particularly COVID-19. And so we are looking at a bigger picture instead of just a, a hawker. We think this will be a good uh, learning lesson for others. To understand how serious is the issue and how we have to like all together come together and follow the SOPs for for the entire nation to recover from the pandemic. Okay, okay, good, good, good. I mean that's good. I mean you you take a firm position. Uh, you are the IGP. Um, the role of the police is you know uh, justice. I don't know what's what's the what's the police um, tagline now. Is it is that the police one? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so something like that, you know, uh, you're right, uh, your job isn't, um, you, you're, you're here to enforce the law, to ensure that the right yard are safe, and everybody plays a role, especially in times of uh, COVID. Okay, we've got less than a minute. Um, thank you so much, uh, Group 7. I wish, I wish you all the best. Uh, you all have definitely come a long way since yesterday. Um, any, any, feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. That's what I have to say. Uh, anything else that, that, that I can help with or... No, I think we are all good. Thank you. Okay, cool. I have one more question. What if we, sure. uh, I don't know how to answer a question, a particular question, and how to kind of skip the question or ask? Oops. Okay, yeah. uh, so we've got a minute left. I think I see the countdown. Um, I think you can, what you can do is you can ask for a little bit of time to discuss with your teammates. Um, especially, you know, if, if, you, if not, you, you want to try to not say that we will look into this matter. Uh, but if you really can't, go back to the core of it. Lah. You can talk about you know, your duty and responsibility. So your hook is always what you're doing is in the interest of the society, the greater society. So go to the big picture, it's times of COVID and stuff like that. But discuss with your team potential answers in the event you cannot answer something. Thank you. You're welcome. All the best. Okay, I'll be leaving now. I think I should click on this leave breakout room button. Uh, so yeah, good luck. Good luck to the team. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Alright, thanks. Yeah. thanks Good luck, team. Good luck. Bye. Uh, after this, in, oh. inside the general.